Wait, what is it? It was three years in the making. The stars of London's burnt Sean Flowers and Richard Walsh talk about the show's most spectacular stunt ever tomorrow morning on GNTV. These dogs are special. They can totally change your life. But you have to earn them. You must make a good team. I think these puppies at five weeks. I, for one, am not prepared to let them go if I don't think that you are able to take care of them properly. I must not be alone. I've got to get on top of this. I've become attached to Alex. Finding a pedigree chum. Short Stories returns Friday at 8 on Channel 4. Star four shopkeepers in despair as tonight the final counterculture of the series visits the precinct. It's a desperate looking place, especially in the evening. You sit down here and it's quiet. Wind's howling, the shutter's rattling. You don't know whether it's the shutter's rattling through the wind or through a breaking. Sometimes I come down the square at night just to see if there's anything happening. I think if there's any more serious burglars considered my business, I'd seriously consider packing up, no matter what the cost. I've about had enough. Break-ins cause a lot of upset. We get a phone call in the middle of the night from the police to say that your alarm's ringing and all your premises has been entered. And it's awful. Your stomach sinks and you get, in, you get dressed and get in the car and come up here just not knowing what sort of damage you're really going to find. I don't tell you that on the telephone. We've come up and found just the shutters have been tried and we've come up and found the place has been devastated. 30 years ago, when we first came here, nobody had uh, shutters. People used to do evening shopping, window shopping, come back the following day. We have lost all that sort of trade, because now we've all got the shutters, high security, which does tend to bring the tone of the area down. Somebody used to churn, thinking of coming to work. It, it really did. It, it was very difficult to walk into work knowing that you were going to have problems. Uh, the problems were, it, it became personal intimidation. You did feel that risk um, of the state. And it was something that we tried to, you tried to put it in the back of your mind that because you're just waiting for the next incident to happen. And they did. They happened one night if we had a, a bad incident and everyone was reading from the shop a bit because we were in shop, they'd come in again. Thank you. All right, that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Good. Well, in the four years uh, we've been trading here, we've had a number of problems. Uh, 
culminating in a very serious break-in which we had about um, well a few months ago now. They went for the clear out, tried to, to empty the premises basically. Uh, they came through the back doors. As you can see now they're quite well fortified. Uh, we worked on uh, fortifying before this last break-in but obviously it wasn't strong enough. Uh, they've now steel plated them, wired them, barred them as you can see. Uh, I'd like to say impenetrable but uh, I don't think they quite are impenetrable. Uh, nothing seems to be uh, burglar proof in the area. We had a roller shutter here which we found one morning had been jammed with its iron bar and peeled back. The bricks had been taken out and they then gave up. The windows have been smashed several times and they're now boarded. The back wall has been encased with steel with welded bolts and special hinges to stop them getting through the door. On this particular Saturday, I was mugged outside of the shop by uh, two men on a motorbike. It did give me a, a few seconds loss of memory and that has actually affected me. Loss of sleep and uh, the occurrence of nightmares over it. I had a, a dream of it reoccurring that with the arm coming round me, woke me up with such a job. This was an architect's dream. Not only an architect's dream, it was a resident's dream because they were desperate for shops. Residential and shops were built together and they thought it was the right thing. We've installed video surveillance equipment so that we can actually record uh, some of these incidents taking place. As you can see, uh, we can pan round the whole shop. We can also um, record through the night so we can actually record break-ins. In this case, we're going to have the shutter coming up any minute now. Um, 2,000 pounds worth of shutter ruined because it's broken into so many times. There's the shutter coming up now. In a minute you'll see a brick come flying through the window. Our uh, chap makes his entry. Comes the brick. Now, his chair goes and he comes wearing a crash helmet so you can't identify him on this sort of tape. Now having a clear up. He's been very selective of what he wants. Not making a particularly good job of it. And he makes his escape. He's probably got away with about £30 worth of that. Probably cost the company a thousand quid in damage. Look at this. The hope is that they're going to take the place of the, the people who might phone us up if there's a problem. Yeah. I mean, you know what it's like, they don't like phoning us up. So uh, at least if the cameras are seeing it, we might get, uh, we'll be told by city engineers, won't we, turn up here now? Mm -hmm. they, seem, they seem to be out of reach, so hopefully they won't be able to rip them or damage them in any way. <coughs> hopefully. Hopefully. It got to the point where our businesses could not stand any more expense either through paying out for shutters, alarms, glass, replacements, and a lot of stock. 
thousands of pounds of this stuff had been lost in the spring, certainly in the last year. So we felt that something else needed to be done. We'd spoken to the police and agreed to police presence. And we felt the next step would be security cameras. The majority of people are filling their hopes on the cameras as uh, the only alternative, I think. There's no further measures. I don't think any of the shopkeepers can take. They've got all the shuttering, the grilling, the alarm systems. And if that doesn't stop them, maybe the cameras will. If the cameras don't work, uh, I'll just see the square going steadily downhill. Sometimes it makes you feel that you can just give it all up and you just go out, close that door and close the school away. But you just can't do that because people rely on you. And of course, again, you've got a lease that they can't come back on to you to, uh, to pay. So you do have to carry on. Why should you really let them win the day? do actually become aware of things before you, you attempt to uh, leave the shop you watch and as you are locking up the shop you are aware of everything that is going on about you. In other words you become a little bit streetwise. We're not in a position just to pack up and walk out the way. Sometimes we feel like it's a fresh start to a breaking. But because we all have a lease, which may be anything up to nine years, we can't just close down and walk out because the lease would still have to be paid for. I'd like to think this square is, uh, is the worst in the country, but uh, I fear it's not. There's probably a lot of other problems around the country that I'm not aware of. And probably a lot of people are not aware of the problems we have in the square. Uh, they read about the odd burglary, perhaps, but uh, I don't think they realise how it affects the people that we receive in 